that's what this shop this week I've got some shaper footage I've got some grinder updates I've really done a lot to it in the last week I've got some welding footage I've got some random stuff of course like always and I think that's it so let's get started Okay, so we dropped off last week, in last week's video, uh, right where I'm taking off now. And uh, we're still working on the 90 degree set, 9045. And uh, I want to show you the method that I'm going to use in order to, uh, to get these surfaces true to one another. And a little different than what I originally envisioned, but this is easier and definitely quicker. So let me bring you in, let me show you. Hopefully we'll get this set finished and maybe you know, get started on the other set, I don't know, but, uh, but I want to get these done. Well, my setup here is pretty simple, really. I've got uh, a gauge box stack and a sign bar and a 12-inch brown and sharp parallel. And really, all I've done is use the surface that we did last week. We uh, machined that last week. That's our reference. And, uh, of course, my vise has a big split where the screw runs down in it so in order to bridge that I used the, uh, the parallel and got my stack up here to give me a 45 degree angle on my bar here and I just left the vise slightly loose and all I'm doing is setting my sign bar up and taking a flashlight from the back side because really this would be plenty accurate enough and I've knocked this around to where my reference surface is setting flat on my sign bar and tightened up the vise. I mean that is it. Um, the reason why I wanted to do it this way, it's just probably the proper way, um, at least in my opinion, to do it, is because I want to cut long ways on these. It's just faster, you know, if you can imagine ten thousandths per stroke on a finishing pass, uh, you know, crosswise. Uh, or lengthwise is a lot faster than ten thousandths per stroke uh, you know, across this entire length. But uh, got a mag base attached to my uh, compound, and I just want to see what I'm going to have to take off of these and how far off of square they actually were. And I was really surprised how close they were. Let me show you. So, you know, within 10, 10 thousandths, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, and I'm happy that it is because I don't want to have to pull off any more of this than I have to. So, that's pretty good.
smooth. These aren't the thickest things in the world, just so I don't get a lot of flex in them. First pass, you can see, just touching on this far one, but they're not, they're not crazy off. Oh, camera over, that would suck. Right, so that was our first pass, so we're zero. Dial in ten. Take the backlash out, rinse, and repeat. Flip it over and then uh, do the same thing on the other side. I changed tools. This one gave me just a little better finish. Not that it's extremely critical, but we want them to, to, to look decent. Stare it. It's a little rough looking, but it's a really nice square, number 20. Uh, machinist square, solid square. And uh, set it on here. I did have to make one adjustment. And I used a uh, you know, set of feeler gauges. And I was touching a little heavy out here. So my square was somewhat, you know, rocking. Just a little. About four thousandths, which is nothing really. I probably should have left it alone. But uh, I got lucky and I put an uh, indicator out here, tapped on it, loosened the vise, tapped on it, and brought it in in one shot, which was luck. And uh, I think that, that is more than good enough for what these are. So I'm going to call that and I'm going to blast off the, uh, the rest of the surface. slow on these, they're really, especially on these little tabs, they're not that well supported and uh, they like to flex so I gotta take light cuts on them. About 10 thou is about as most I like to take.
why the shaper's running. I want to show you this pump a little closer. I'm sorry that it's a little loud. It is what it is. It's got a little overspray on it, which I hate. And I've got a lot of it off, but uh, I think that'll be alright. <laughs> the thing that I want to show you is that uh, the outlet on this is adjustable. So you can pull off uh, these uh, wing nuts. I'll show you the internals of this. It's pretty neat. Pull off the end cap and adjust the position that you want the outlet. I'm going to have it straight up and down. Uh, I think that's the most fitting for the application that we're going to use it in. But uh, you can see the rotor here. You know, it's kind of floating. It's supported on a ceramic shaft. It's got a little ceramic washer here. Uh, let me get you in a little, a little tighter on this. See this end? It's kind of kind of out of focus, but uh, it's got a small uh, recess or uh, pocket there that the end of the shaft here rides in. And the motor just uh, turns this rotor here. She turns it uh, this way, pulls in fluid. It's trapped in these grooves, and this centrifugal force throws it out against the housing and out of that hole which is the outlet, so basic, there's a little ceramic bits, so pretty nice little pump really, um, better quality than what I originally thought, it's got uh, little oil holes, there's one, and then it's got uh, one back here in the back, so actually a pretty nice little bit of external start capacitor, 120 volt, uh, hopefully I can wire this into the circuitry on the uh, on the grinder and uh, have an on and off switch for it. Yeah, I thought that's uh, pretty neat. I think the shaper's done. And she is. Reset. take a really light pass in order to get you know, some of these uh, tabs and stuff because they kind of flex out of the way when the cutter runs over and you can stick up just a little so just make it a light cut to uh, take care of that. That's it. Alright, that's it. Still bolted together. Just gonna take a file and just slightly break these sharp corners. All right, so they are matched. You know, machined them, bolted them together, machined them together. So they are definitely square, you know, within, hmm, within a couple thou, I'm sure, over the entire length. That's pretty good, I think. It's better than they need to be. Uh, and I'm going to unbolt them, you know, do the other set. The other set is going to be a little more complicated.
Okay, so I'm prepping the other set of squares for uh, machining, and uh, both of them have one side where you know, the flat can lay flat, and then it has a pocket on the other. They're both the same. And all I did on uh, on the other set is take those two flat sides and bolt them together when I machined them. And uh, the reason I'm cleaning them up is there's a bunch of raised areas. These are flame cut, and uh, I don't want when I bolt them together, I don't want them to distort and then machine them and then take the bolts out and then them flex back to their to their rest position. So I'm just knocking off all those high spots. That way they bolt together flat and solid. And uh, this is something that I've never heard anybody mention, but I've noticed it on almost all of my files. I have a five gallon bucket of files. Almost every flat file that I have will have a convex side and a concave side. I guess it's just you know, they just distort and hardening or whatever. And I use that to my advantage all the time on the lathe when I'm hand finishing shafting or something. If you take your file on the lathe, you know, try one side, chips will probably gather in the center, and on the other side, you know, if you do some filing, it'll probably gather on the edges. You know, I use it to my advantage when I'm deburring parts and stuff, so, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, I actually have a file that I use mostly on the lathe, and it's marked convex, concave. Uh, that way I just grab it and, and know which side is which. Try it. You know, probably not all files are like that, but uh, the majority of the ones that I have are. These are quality Nicholas files. This is a hand smooth. So, you know, I use it to my advantage, and, uh, you know, give it a shot. See what, uh, see if you find the same the same phenomenon. little tungsten grinder it's just a cheap one wouldn't recommend it for a full-time welding shop of course but uh, for a part-time hobby guy you know, this this has been really good for me So I kind of kind of rushed this, but uh, we got one more pass left. But you get the idea. Looks pretty good.
it's not going to work. Spilled to me. Huh? It's perfect. Well, this may be a little long winded, but bear with me. I want to give you an update on uh, you know what I've done with this grinder so far and, and where I'm at on it. Now, I've been messing with this thing off and on. I got my coolant system working. I'll walk you around and show you it, and I'm extremely extremely uh, happy with the way that it's turned out. I've also tried to dust this chuck off just to try to get it better than than what it was and you know test some things out some of the combinations that I have available right now to see what works as far as grinding a chuck in and what doesn't because that's a pretty big chuck for a guy that doesn't have any surface grinding experience to try to grind you know I do have grinding experience but I'm talking you know cutter grinder experience where you're grinding you know relief on a cutter which is no material at all hardly so this is quite a bit different and I'm, I'm starting to get it uh, but uh, it's slow and if I could describe surface grinding for a beginner in in one word it would be frustrating uh, and uh, you know it's easy it's a lot easier to find combinations that don't work than it is to find ones that do let's just say that so I tried to grind it in this is a uh, 46 closed structure um, H wheel and uh, had some mixed results with it. It just all depends on the way that I dress the wheel, the speed of my traverse and end feed. But we'll grind it in together uh, when I go to do it seriously. I've got uh, some new balls here thanks to my buddy Jim Lichty. He found them and I picked up a set. These are grade 10 um, lapped balls and they're about as close to 5 8 as I think you can really get, and relatively cheap, uh, cheaper than you would think for precision uh, balls like that. So I'm going to be replacing those, and all the work that I've done on this chuck has really just been experimental on my part. So let me take you a walk around of the coolant system and stuff, and I'll explain some of the other things I've got to, I got going on with this. All right, so I got the coolant system running. I mean, it's almost, it's not silent, but it's about as close to silent as uh, as I've ever heard a coolant system and uh, man, that thing uh, delivers quite a bit of coolant. Right now I've just got a smashed piece of copper here uh, just temporarily but I want to change this design to something more like uh, Robin Renzetti did. Something that gets you right up under the wheel, right up at the edge of the wheel where all the grinding takes place because that's really where you where you need your coolant. But uh, I'm really happy with the way that that uh, has worked out so far. Now, I've been trying to follow uh, Steve Barton from Solid Rock Machine Shop, his procedure on grinding in a chuck. You know, that guy is uh, pretty knowledgeable on grinding. And, uh, you know, been trying to follow it as close to it as I can with the with the stuff that I have. Now, here is a wheel that I ordered. This is a Radiac 46J. Uh, now, this is a closed structure wheel. It doesn't have a lot of open area between the grain particles. This is a 46 also closed structure. And I've got a 46 open structure H or I uh, coming in. And that's what I'm going to grind this chuck in, you know, permanently with, or at least that's what I'm going to try. Um, the closed structure wheels just clog up, you know, quickly and uh, end up, you know, causing you issue. By the time you get across the chuck, your wheel's loaded up and, you know, you get a wedged shaped chuck. This is pretty good. It's actually really close, but it's not uh, not where I want it to be. I still need to change the balls and stuff and, uh, you know, get them, get them installed. Give me the best chance for accuracy on this machine. Now, well, I splashed them, but here's the balls. These are from Ball Tech. They're about as close to, to 5 8 as... Uh, as you really probably need to be. And uh, these are the same ones that uh, Robin Renzetti used on his recent grinder rebuild, so I know that they're, you know, good enough for uh, for me. 
So those are the balls that I'm going to try. Let me show you the actual pump installed in the system itself. It's kind of dark over here, but uh, you can see get my return line. That's just an old vacuum cleaner line. It's corrugated, so I don't know if that's going to cause me long-term issues with the particle buildup in it, but we'll see. There's the, going into the sock filter, into the vessel, which I never painted, and into the pump, which is running right now, and it's relatively quiet and delivers quite a bit of uh, coolant, as, you, as you've seen. So I'm really, really happy with the coolant system. It's really you know, turned out uh, better than I expected. I made myself a quickie uh, splash guard here, just a piece of rubber held on by some neodymium magnets. Now this is cast aluminum, so of course magnets don't stick to that, but uh, I cleaned off the paint and the primer off of the cast aluminum. JB welded a piece of 12 gauge hot rolled steel to it. It did that front and back, and then just made uh, a couple covers you know, that can be easily taken off and stuck back on, depending on the wheel size that you're gonna use. You could have multiple covers. And that made a huge difference because I was getting quite a bit of spray off the back of that wheel. Got me some what used to be clear uh, Lexan uh, uh, shields because I was getting a lot of splash back into the saddle. So and that took care of that. You know, the coolant nozzle would hit the edges of the chuck, especially on the other side, and then it would spray off to the side. So you, know, you got to have some sort of shields. And, uh, and what I've got seems to be working. When I go to grind this in, this chuck in for real, um, I've got me a few blocks. I've actually got six 4140 blocks that are numbered one through six. I've ground them on one side only to the same height. And uh, when I go to grind this thing in for real, I'll take you know a couple in the center and then out on the outer edges of the chuck. I'll grind these blocks and then check them on the surface plate to make sure that this chuck is flat. They don't recommend, or at least as far as I've seen, they don't really recommend you take a indicator off of the column and run over the chuck. Uh, supposedly that can give you, uh, you know, a false reading. So I believe, you know, actually grinding apart and checking it is much better than running an indicator over your chuck. So that's what I plan to do when I when I go to uh, grind this thing in for real. But you know. It's got a decent finish, got a little wheel hop in there. That could either be from the wheel or the spindle, but uh, I'm actually getting you know, a pretty good finish with this machine. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's, if that's as good as I ever get, I'm happy with that. Well guys, I think that's about it. Um, been a crazy busy week, like I always say, it's, you know, Ever since I've started the channel, I've been overwhelmed with, uh, you know, between work, family, and, and uh, you know, editing. I, that's all I do. <laughs> oh. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Maybe next week we'll try to grind in this chuck or, you know, change the balls in the table or both. Um, and maybe some work because I've got plenty to do. I just need to get out here and have time to do it. Big thanks to the guys who... Uh, clicked on the link in my video descriptions and donated to the fund to get me and Elizabeth out to the bash this year. Uh, we're getting really close. Um, you know, we're basically three quarters of the way there. And uh, Elizabeth's extremely excited about it. I am too. And I will hope that I'll get to meet some of you guys out there. So if you need anything, contact me through my email. You know, click on my little guy to subscribe. A big thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. You guys are awesome, and I think that's it. If you need anything or have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I try to get back with everybody when I can, but uh, you know how that goes. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>